are investigating a shooting that happened outside a football game. Our Jessica Maduger spoke to a parent whose child was at that game. It's scary that this is happening, you know, around you. Friday night in Racine, a 16 year old girl was shot and injured near Horlick Field following a high school football game. The teen told police she was walking near High Street from Carlisle Avenue when she heard gunshots and felt pain in her leg. Racine police found her laying down on a sidewalk. She was taken to a nearby hospital and is expected to be okay. Police have yet to release information regarding the suspect. She did hear those gunshots and um, she was she was scared. That's Lacey Jones. Her daughter was attending the game with friends. They went into the girls bathroom before they were going to leave. Um, and then I guess uh, all of a sudden, like they heard a few shots. Um, people started running and they were screaming like shots fired. When they got ushered out of the bathroom, they were told like you have to get out. You have to leave. Luckily, the girls were able to safely evacuate. It was more surreal. Like she didn't think that it would, you know, it could actually happen around her. Around the same time, fights broke out in Wauwatosa at Hart Park during a high school football game between Wauwatosa East and Milwaukee Lutheran. Police say they also received a report of a person with a gun in the stands. As students were asked to leave the stadium, four people refused to leave and were arrested. Like many parents, Lacey is now having to think twice before sending her teen to a football game. It's kind of hard to explain because you want her to be there and you want her to have fun and experience life, enjoy being outside and being with her friends. And, you know, that's kind of like a teenage thing. But then, you know, you also don't want her to get hurt. Tell your kids to just be aware of your surroundings. Jessica Maduker, TMJ4 News. The Milwaukee County Medical Examiner says a 24 year old man was killed in a car crash Friday night. This happened just before 10 near 95th and National. West Allis police say this was a head on collision and that multiple people were taken to the hospital. We are working to learn how many people were injured. We'll keep you updated though on air and on our website at TMJ4.com. Meanwhile, Milwaukee police are searching for suspects in a deadly hit and run that happened just before 2 o'clock this morning. A 36 year old woman was hit by a car near a 60th and Fond du Lac. She was taken to a hospital but did not survive. Local leaders and people across the community came together today calling for an end to the violence. The Northwest Side Community Development Corporation organized a peace walk through the Garden Homes and Franklin Heights neighborhoods. People wore shirts with the peace symbol prominently displayed. The Office of Violence Prevention's new director, Ashanti Hamilton, says it's important to add stability to neighborhoods. We know that there are a lot of environmental issues that make violence um, more prevalent and make it seem more welcome. Um, we want to try to combat those things on the front end. Hamilton says his office is working to add more people to the team to make more events like this possible. Storm Team 4 now with a live look over Milwaukee. Look at that beautiful blue skies with just a few clouds. Brian Goddard here is now timing out the rain in your Storm Team forecast. Brian, I'm so happy to see you in person. It's been so long. It's been so long. How are you doing? <laughs> good, good. And the weather is like perfect for it, too. It, it sure has been. The last six days have been fantastic. And now we're already starting to see some changes here in southeastern Wisconsin as a cold front is moving through. It has yet to make it to Milwaukee. We're still around 80 degrees, a little bit of humidity outside. Uh, but that front has made its way through the northern counties uh, of our viewing area and that rain. While it's not a very impressive looking line, it just keeps raining over the same areas as it slowly drifts to the east. And that is why we're expecting some pretty significant rain totals over the next couple of days as well. Still upper 70s to lower 80s from Milwaukee, Waukesha South, where the front has pushed through and that wind has shifted to the northeast. It's in the upper 60s to lower 70s. And those temperatures will keep dropping this evening. It'll be 66 by 10 o'clock uh, here in Milwaukee, and that will be warm <laughs> considering how temperatures tomorrow will take a nosedive with the northeast wind. And oh, yes, rain does move in after midnight tonight and be prepared for rain throughout the day tomorrow and even into Monday. How much rain we could see. I'll show you that coming up. All right, Brian, thank you. In today's headlines, Charles III has been proclaimed Britain's new king. He automatically assumed the title when king Queen Elizabeth II died on Thursday, but a ceremony held this morning made it official. Meanwhile, Buckingham Palace officials announced a funeral for Queen Elizabeth will be held on the 19th, a week from Monday. President Joe Biden and other world leaders are expected to attend. 
Britain has declared a national period of mourning that will last until she is laid to rest. Now, here in the U.S., former President Trump and the Justice Department have each put forward two candidates to serve as a special master to review the documents seized from Mar-a-Lago last month. The FBI collected more than 11,000 documents in that search, including more than 100 classified government records. Three of the candidates are retired federal judges. Now, Chief Justice John Roberts is defending the Supreme Court's decision to reverse Roe v. Wade. In his first public comments since then, Roberts said the court's decisions should not be driven by public opinion. The court will be back in session in less than a month. Justices will consider other controversial issues, including affirmative action, voting rights, and environmental regulations. Lots still to come on TMJ4 News at 5, including a local small business owner helping students take on the new school year. How many supplies he handed out to kids in our area. Ahead for us, we're live in the United Kingdom with all of today's historic moments as King Charles III was formally proclaimed the new monarch and Russia's stunning retreat in a key region of Ukraine. Those stories and more ahead on Nightly News. All right, lots of festivals taking advantage of the warm weather today. Taco Fest just began their dinner session at the Summerfest grounds. This event, of course, features tacos, but of course, it also has live music, luchador wrestling, and even a chihuahua beauty pageant. It runs until 8 this evening. Now, just up the road at Veterans Park, professional kite flyers showed off some spectacular pieces at the International Kite Festival. Some of the kites are more than 150 feet long. Now, this event lasts until 6 this evening, but it is scheduled to return tomorrow from 10 until 5. Hundreds of dog lovers and their furry friends spent the day in Mitchell Park in Brookfield for the 15th annual WAG Fest. This event raises money for the Elmbrook Humane Society. Always good when there's a lot of dogs out there. Now, school is back in session, but not everyone had all of the supplies for success in the classroom. An event today at Black Market MKE near 19th and Hampton stepped in to help. They gave away a thousand pairs of shoes and backpacks. The store's owner says this event has been going on for eight years and that this was the biggest one. Now, disinfecting wipes, makeup wipes, baby wipes, and more. If you didn't know the history of these household items, there's a chance for you to learn right here in our area. A good way of seeing what's in the future sometimes is to look at the past and see what has succeeded, what hasn't succeeded. A lot of these products are just no longer available. All right, that's Mike Kryshak. He has the world's largest collection of wipes. Learn more about the history of this household item and what the future has in store for the product tomorrow morning. Don't miss Positively Milwaukee with Carol Meekins at 9 right here on TMJ4. All right, taking a live look outside there. Still looks good out there in Milwaukee. Brian Goddard is back with your seven-day forecast after the break. September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. One local mother is giving back to the hospital that gave her son life-saving treatment. Colleen Kelly's son was diagnosed seven years ago this weekend. She now holds a fundraising event every year for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. She has raised more than $300,000 so far. Now this year, she wants to add $7,500 to that total. Um, we have huge goals and every single penny is given back to St. Jude. As Dan Danny Thomas said, uh, no child should die in the dawn of life and that is a very true statement. They're, they just deserve more and we're going to give them everything that we can. They do wonderful work down there. Now if you would like to donate, scan that QR code on your screen right now. Again, they are hoping to raise $7,500. In other health news, we're following the first successful organ donation in the U.S. happened back in 1974. Nearly, excuse me, 54, nearly 70 years later, the country has marked its one millionth transplant. One of those recipients is Milwaukee native Evan Williams. He had been on the transplant list for three years after being diagnosed with a kidney disease. His donation came from a living donor. It was an altruistic living donor, uh, somebody I did not know, came forward and wanted to just give back and help. Right now, the majority of kidney transplants come from deceased donors in some parts of the country. The wait list for a new kidney can be as long as 10 years. Doctors hope more people might consider donating in order to speed up that process.
All right, Storm Team 4 now. Brian Goddard is here with the forecast for your weekend. It looks good so far, but yes. things might be changing here. Uh, big changes uh, over this evening, overnight tonight, and then tomorrow completely different. We always say what a difference a day can make, and tomorrow you will be saying that a lot because today was fantastic. We, this was day six of a nice stretch of weather after kind of a dreary Saturday and Sunday last weekend, but no rain. 82 today was your high after a morning low of 62. Then the front started drifting through and temperatures have been dropping just north. I mean, you don't have to go far. West Bend now 68 degrees, dew point 64. We're seeing some fog along the lakefront in our northern counties as well as those temperatures have been dropping. You can see where the front is. It's visible on the map. It is 67 in Sheboygan and Fond Lake, 60 in Green Lake and the Dells where they're seeing some rain, but still holding on to upper 70s from Milwaukee to Burlington to Lake Geneva and Kenosha. As that front slowly drifts to the south, you'll start to see those temperatures drop this evening as well. Rain finally starting to make its way into southeastern Wisconsin, extreme western Fond du Lac County near Ripon and Brandon, Rosendale as well. Starting to see those rain showers, but notice the movement. It's to the northeast while the whole line is slowly, and I mean slowly inching its way through southeastern Wisconsin. I don't think we see a raindrop here in Milwaukee until at least midnight. But this is the setup. It's a narrow band of rain that will just keep traveling over the same area. The front is making its way through, and that is why over the next couple of days we will see some impressive rain totals because that rain is just going to keep slowly going over the same areas. By midnight tonight, about a 25% chance of rain. I think it's a pretty safe bet that it's going to rain tomorrow morning and throughout the day. So get ready for fall. I got the fall tie on rainy, windy, chilly. And then once this moves out Monday, the rest of the week looks beautiful and above average temperatures. Average now almost in the mid 70s will be in the low 80s by the end of the week. But tomorrow, not pleasant. If you like fall days, tomorrow's your day. Uh, rain, gusty winds. It'll continue throughout the day, continue overnight. Not expecting any severe weather, but some heavy downpours through Monday. So overnight tonight, we drop into the 50s and low 60s. With the higher dew points, expect fog and there will be rain and it will be heavy at times. And throughout the day tomorrow, temperatures really don't do much. We stay right around 64 to 66 degrees and have an umbrella handy and hold on to it. Look at these rain chances throughout the day tomorrow and it'll continue into the overnight hours where we can see additional heavy rain and this is what it looks like visually in the future forecast downpours coming in overnight into the morning hours continuing throughout the afternoon. Again, no severe weather, but you're going to get some heavy rain at times and as this low then tracks off to the east, we'll get the rain on the back side of it throughout the day on Monday as well. We're looking easily at one to two inches of rain across most of southeastern Wisconsin, and there could be some areas that get three, four, maybe five inches of rain. And oh yeah, by the way, tomorrow windy northeast winds at 20 to 40 miles per hour. Those raindrops will be flying sideways. So the rain moves in overnight temperatures, upper 50s to lower 60s. And then for Sunday fall after a beautiful summer day today, we'll be in the upper 50s to lower 60s with some heavy rain. 65 on Monday, same as it was going to be tomorrow. And then just like that, we change things again, Mary Jo, and it'll be 75 Tuesday and upper 70s to lower 80s as we get into next weekend.